<laughs> Hello, this is Texas Steampunk Connection, again, where we will attempt to talk steampunk. Um, I'm Flavio, as, as usual, and with me, as always, is Thax, and apparently Jack is having some kind of, Jack is some, having some kind of technical issues, and he has not joined us yet, but if he joins us, we'll, we'll, we'll put him into the feed. Ah, well, it's been a week, two weeks since we've been on, and we've watched a few shows. Right. Well, you're jumping ahead of things here. Jumping ahead. First, what are you drinking tonight? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. All right, my bad. I'm drinking what I was drinking four weeks ago. The first time is the Texas Leaguer Double Bop. I don't know the way the light shines in these things. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's really good. It's a German Cristal Dark Lager. I really enjoy it. You know, it came in a six pack, so I have not yet get drunk all six. So I decided to you know, drink another one today. And you, what are you drinking? Uh, this week I have, have uh, Circle Brewery, which is a local Austin brewery. Uh, Envy is their amber. And when I bought it, I bought it because it was cheap. But honestly, <laughs> this is a very, uh, it has a really smoky character to this amber. It is not, it is not, uh, you know, just basic. It, it's pretty good. Uh, so I, I recommend it. That if you live in Austin or you're in a place where they have it in stores, um, I can get it in my yeah. local APB. I don't know if that's the case across the state. But uh, it's it's really nice. Uh, so. I like the color. It looks it looks good. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice dark color. Um, yeah, that's just how I like them. Like this one. Oh, your glass <laughs> I got it. one. Yeah, the glass glasses circle because <laughs> we've been to this brewery. Yeah, yeah, it's up the street from my aunt's house. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I've, I've, I must have acquired this there or through some kind of, of um, charity thing. I think there was a go to each brewery and drink a pint charity thing and get to keep the glass that I did one time. I remember that. It had something to do many, with many uh, ago. supporting local dog shelters or something. Didn't I it? believe so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, actually, I think there's also like <laughs> yeah. I think there's also another one for like therapy horses or something like that or saving horses. Oh. <laughs> I, I remember that uh, there's a, a therapy uh, horse farm out east of Tech Austin for um, people with PTSD or uh, or what have you that being around horses is is is, is therapeutic and and helps them to to sort of relax and get in touch with something that's that's not the complexity of a human being i guess i don't know i right well i'll drink to that but, but I, I remember them <laughs> what else has happened this week uh i got into the poison ivy this weekend uh which is why my my, my eye looks kind of freaky <laughs> Luckily, I can't really see too well, so you're, we are good. <laughs> oh, they, yeah, now it looks like you got punched. Right. Yeah, it looks like you got punched. <laughs> we'll say that. <laughs> yeah, you got into a fight with a plant that punched you. It's a dark thing. So I went out because I it was just taken over. I didn't touch it. I, I tried not 
to disturb it much at all. I just went in there with some with some uh, clippers and and cut as much of the vines at, at the lowest levels as possible and just left it, it left it hanging there because I know I'm super allergic. And it got me anyway. Uh, obviously, yeah, it's yeah. The fact me. that you you never touch it, it still got you. Yeah, you're allergic. <laughs> <laughs> it must have spewed something into the air that, uh, man, that, that's a In defense monster. of itself. Yeah. You, know, you, you were trying to kill it, so it was defending itself. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, what has oh, happened man. since uh, last we've talked? Um, oh, a lot of stuff has happened to me, but I don't really want to talk about it. Um, if, if, you, well, if, you, you if, you're, if you're friends <laughs> on Facebook with me, you you know stuff that's happened to me, so it's all good. Yeah, we're still in <laughs> lockdown. Uh, people are struggling. Yeah, I think we're, well, yeah, people, people are poking their head out. And congratulations. Um, yeah. They're talking about uh, unemployment, uh, the additional six hundred dollars being cut off at the end of next month yeah um, yay <laughs> yes that's, that's tough. Just in time because i'm now one of them um <laughs> i know uh let's see what else well uh, I mean, we're, going, we're all I mean, sitting at home they're, Not they're calling they're, they're relocking they're relocking Locking things down because they realize they they screwed up. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. In Austin, the bars are closing again, and uh, uh, some bars are suing the governor because he's he's uh picking them out and they're taking it personally. I guess they're suing him because they can't do business. Well, you know, it's, it's, it, yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, it needs to be done because, you know, we're getting sick. People are getting sick and dying out there. So, you know, you got to take care of them. Um, so stay home, drink, get home like we do. And, uh, yeah, exactly. You know, and talk to your friends online like we're doing right now. You know, you don't have to record it like we are, but. <laughs> That's plenty of time to watch films. I'm going to have plenty more time to watch films now. I'm sure. I'm going uh, so, to get so sick of watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got into, I'm getting to watch Eric, watch uh, Firefly with Erica. I've seen it before, okay. but I've it for the first yeah. time. It is a favorite yeah. out there among among us people, us nerds. Oh, and yeah. It, it, is, it is very steampunk leaning. You know, or weird, weird, weird Western, maybe weird West. Because yeah, it's very Western yeah. theme. It is so good. What yes, happens is, is. Like, we only watch <laughs> one episode at a time, right? We don't yeah, there's, there's, there's only one, one season. Yeah. You, you can't binge because. Then it'll be no. gone. <laughs> exactly. So I'm. I'm. So from what I can tell, she's liking it. Fine. She's actually liking yeah, it now. Yeah, she's liking it. Yeah, because I know she was avoiding it because of toxic fans out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. She just uh, a couple weeks ago said, "I think we're going to try to watch that." Like, okay. Okay. Awesome. That's good. That's cool to hear. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool to hear. I mean, yeah, there's a lot to talk about Firefly. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do a watch party or something. No. <laughs> or we can just there is there, like, there's you, ways to do watch film? parties. If you What's go to that? YouTube, you can find fan films of Firefly. There's a no? bunch of those. Which I, I have not watched because I don't want to watch them without her, and I don't want <laughs> to spoil something that happens in the show 
with her. Because of what they say. Hey. <laughs> but when it's over, we're going to watch those. And there's not. I haven't seen those. I haven't seen them. But... There are a bunch of comic books. There are, there are comic books that happened after the movie. There are comic books that happened after the TV show and before the movie that basically fill in the gaps. And I've read all those comic books, and they're pretty good. But, um, and, I, and I consider them canon myself, personally, you know, because some of them were actually written by the same guy who wrote the, sh who wrote the show. Joss Whedon wrote, wrote it, Joss, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, think, yeah I, I know he was he creator of it. every episode, but he no. was basically he wrote, laying out the, yeah, the he, plot. Yeah, the showrunner and the creator. Yeah, he also wrote some of the comic books. I didn't and know was that. In charge of that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I know there are some more hardback novels that have just come out that are Firefly. I have not read any of them. I don't have any of them, but they are on my list of things to read and to get. But um, speaking of movies, hey, how about a segue? <laughs> <laughs> we did watch one that came out, I believe. I believe it was well. It was released in the United States last year, before, before the lockdown. <laughs> but it right. wasn't a wide. It wasn't, it wasn't a wide release. It, it was just kind of there. Um, it was called the Current War, and not like the war. Not not like the war that's happening now, <laughs> but, but like the current ACDC currents, <laughs> electricity. And, um, you know, and it was one I wanted to go see when it came out, but I never got around to it because it was short-lived in the theaters. Yeah. And to sum it up, <laughs> I mean, your favorite and mine, Benedict Cumberbatch was in it. <laughs> Everyone loves him. Right? <laughs> Or cover bun, or <laughs> I don't know how you say his name, Bandersnatch. Yeah, and he played Thomas Edison. Although I think he would have made a better Tesla, personally. But <laughs> he played Thomas Edison. I, I was, I was really impressed. I did not expect him to be. I mean, he doesn't look anything like Thomas Edison, I thought. Exactly. Exactly. That's, yeah. But um, he, he, really, he really showed up for the part. Like, he, he changed his hairstyle to be sort of the, the hair, hat hair mess that Thomas Edison had. And he sort of hunched over. And, you know, for somebody who doesn't look anything like Edison, I thought he did pretty good. Pretty well, good. Well, he's a really, he's, he's a good actor, you know, so, but still, I think he would have made a better Tesla. I do not think of him as a good actor. <laughs> you don't think of him as a good actor? Well, you, you just well, complimented him I'm there. <laughs> I, maybe I do now. Maybe I do. But he, I thought he did a really interesting job. Yeah, and, um, and it, but the thing is, when I when I was thinking when I when I heard of this show, I thought it was going to be Tesla versus Edison, but it wasn't really Tesla versus Edison. It was more Westinghouse versus Edison. Right. You know? Right. Uh, it, it was really a movie about Thomas Edison. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, Tesla was in it, and I kept yeah. waiting for him to show up and sort of, you know, be Tesla. Movie, <laughs> but he didn't. Uh, the yeah. guy who played him was was just fine. He was very good, mm -hmm. and uh, it just the movie was not about Tesla particularly. Um, yeah, he was a really small part. Of in it, very small part in it. You Smaller know, than I, I mean, expected. They, mm -hmm. I mean, they showed the they, they showed the point 
where Edison was like, you know, about paying him a bunch of money for doing something he goes i was just joking about that which is a what what people what people really you know <laughs> that's been mentioned a lot it's like he, 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 he just a bunch of money it, it, seemed, it seemed to me that yeah he was obviously joking i mean he was mm -hmm. a very off the cuff comment and you know you can do but this that's, that's the way, yeah but but uh, Tesla's the type of the Tesla's the type of person who doesn't seem to recognize that kind of humor or whatever. He took him at his word. He said it. He right. must have meant that, right. you know, <laughs> you know. But still, I mean, that's still one of the, that's one of the things that you know it's always been a thing. Is like, well, Tesla versus Edison. He cheated Tesla out of money, blah blah blah. That, you know that kind of stuff. But you know, he kind of maybe did. You know, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. Really good job at um, portrait. Portraying Edison not as a villain. Uh, they, yeah, they, he, he was a businessman. Hard to make him a uh, sympathetic character, which I've never mm -hmm. seen before. Yeah, he's always been cast as a villain. Yeah. Right. I mean, he's the guy who killed animals and screwed Tesla over and never developed anything for himself. He just took other people's ideas. Um, I mean, which is it's not inaccurate, I guess. It's just coming at from, from coming at, <laughs> at it from an angle, and this movie came at it right to differently. And I thought that was really yes. interesting. Yeah, um, I mean, like I said, he he was he, he's a he was a businessman through and through. Through, I mean, he 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 oh. he really believed in what he was doing. You know, he wanted to bring light to the world, you know, but his way, you know, his way was the best way, you know, and according to him, you know, it, it, uh, and, you know a good, a good uh, three dimensional view of the man. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I don't know how necessarily how accurate it was, but. Uh, I think I was much fairer than what I'd seen before. Um, he had his faults, he had his flaws. From the very beginning of the movie, they're talking about money, how much money this yeah. can make and that can make. Mm -hmm. But they also told, they also describe Edison as like not somebody who cares about money. Um, he, he they, they showed him also awesome. caring about the people who. What I liked, I mean, they showed him also caring about the people who worked for him. You know, it's like he wanted to make sure they had their kept their jobs or whatever at one point. Because I think when he was selling the company or being bought out or something happened, right. they wanted to make sure. That, you know, what about the people who are working for me? You know, or you know when they're saying. Well, we can't lay these people off. Let's move them from here, from this section of the company to this section of the company. You know, he didn't want to lay anybody off or fire anybody. But he, you know, he tried his best to do that, you know. And that was a good thing about him. You know, he cared about the people who worked for him. You never hear about, I, I'd never heard about Edison being forced out of his company before. Um, mm. I, yeah, a lot of details that that I never come across because I don't do research. I just watch films. And stuff. <laughs> that's my fault. But <laughs> hey, well, that's okay. As far as we know, this is accurate. This is complete. This is a historical document now. <laughs> I yeah, this, I don't know how accurate this is either, but. You yeah. know, I saw things that I hadn't seen before. That yeah, I it, it definitely put him in, in, in a different light. Yeah, definitely put him in a different light. Um, because I mean, I always figured, I mean, Edison was the bad guy. I mean, heck, we had the uh, unantanium. I mean, we put Edison as the bad guy, you know, and Tesla right. as 
the good guy, you know. And, and you know, the guy who played Edison did a really good job, and he's still kind of playing Edison doing his science shows. And we, he was on our podcast not uh, many years, a couple years ago. That was Daniel. That was uh, that was one of our first episodes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a long time ago. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's that's really a guy who played really did a good job, too. This was a really great show. Now, I saw the director's cut because that's the only uh, option that's offered on Amazon Prime. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know uh, if that's what you saw. Um, I think so. Yeah, I, didn't, I, 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 I had a different version, yeah. but it said director's cut on it. Okay. Um, yeah, and I had to pay. It's also, for it I believe it's, it's also time. it's also available. It's also available on um, Apple TV. I believe if, if you have Apple TV, it should be on Apple TV. Oh. But it was really surprisingly good. Uh, the The cinematography was really good. Uh, mm -hmm. It it uh, it was almost oh. sort of a it had a dreaminess to it. The way he put the the director played with light and darkness, shadow, yeah, agreed. sort of mm -hmm. spooky clouds, and and kind of the way he uh, told the story and changed scenes, it was very dreamy. Uh, I don't know if that was. I agree. I mean, um, I I really well, agree. I, this the director was a guy, a, a gentleman named Alfonso Gomez Rion. Rion, Rion. R E J O N. Um, with with Alfonso, I'm sure there's a that J probably has a, a small small sound on it. <laughs> Rejon? Rejon? Yeah. Oh, hello. I have it might a... be Portuguese, in which case I have no idea. <laughs> but oh, I... I see Jack is coming on. One second. Hello, oh. hello. Let me see if we can get Jack back on screen here. Hello. Hello. Hello, Jack. I'm here. Hey, Jack. How you doing? Doing pretty How you good. doing, man? We, we, were, we were missing you for a second. I, I, have a I got busy at downstairs. Yeah, I'm, I'm up here now. We're good. No I worries. It's profusely. kind of dark where you are, but we can see I'm your face. I'm going to get that fixed in just a second. We were talking about the current war. Did you get to watch the current war, Jack? I got through two episodes. Uh, no, no, no. no. no that's, that's War of the Worlds. War of the Worlds. Oh, no, I didn't get to that the, one. The current I, war. I movie the current the, war. I never got the link. I, I re-downloaded ah. everything that was on there, and it was the it was That's, the other thing. So I am you're on your own. Yep. I'm sorry. I thought I did send a link for the current war. I know I did. Uh, it was I'm like, sure I it's it like, a week, like I sent it like worry. a week before. I sent uh, it like twice. <laughs> I might have just missed it the first time. Then. No worries. <laughs> well then, Jack. So <laughs> let us tell you all about it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, we'll tell, I'm we'll, watching we'll, the wrong we'll thing. You. That's okay. We'll talk about the War of the Worlds in a minute as well. That's that's on the agenda. <laughs> but um, yeah, we were talking about the current war uh, with Bender Dick, Bender Dick Cumberbun, Cumberbatch, Cumber Slash, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know that guy. Yeah, that guy. Who played the one with a really cool uh. The, Groupies that are uh, usually female. <laughs> yeah, he 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 was playing Thomas Edison, and he did a this, despite not looking anything like Thomas Edison. He looked he did a good job. <laughs> well, I mean, we can only do we can only do so uh, so much on that. <laughs> and um, oh. it was and like I, just, I think to repeat what we said earlier, it's like I, when I first heard about it, I thought it was going to be oh, what's that? <laughs> There's some music going on. Oh, I apologize. Let me see if I can get that fixed. Turn it down just a little. Yeah. Hey, Cody, can you hand me the remote that's right there in front of the TV? Okay. We'll get that fixed in just a moment. All righty. Perfect. <laughs> and now that we have, I have done every video po faux pas, you know, we're now good. It's okay. Nobody's watching us live. This, this <laughs> is way, this love for our hats. audio listeners. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Everyone got a new hat but me. I need to fix that. 
I, I have a variety of hats. Yeah. <laughs> a different hat for every outfit, although I'm not wearing the outfit. I am wearing a steampunk shirt, though. The... Very nice. I love cat. it. <laughs> I got a new shirt. I don't think y'all can see it very well in the lighting I got going. Currently. I just see black. <laughs> Back up. Right here somewhere. Nope, I just it see says, black. It says Hoth, but the O is actually an Imperial probe droid. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, so. Hard to see, but it's there. It's very tone. It's it's a black shirt with black dye on it, so you have to like you you'll notice that makes it. it the see, yeah. yeah, but I kind of no like worries, it for that. No worries at all. All right, so we are watching the current war, everybody. But me. Yeah. So what is going no, on? You will be your homework for next for next two weeks. Give us your take on it. Apparently, Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> yes. give it thirty percent. Um, it's it's almost an Edison biopic. Hmm. Yeah. It's it, and it focuses more on Edison versus versus Westinghouse as opposed to Edison versus Tesla, which I thought it was going to be when I first saw the previews of it. <laughs> but I wasn't that I wasn't disappointed. It was just not expected. Yeah, I didn't know anything about Westinghouse up until then. I'm not sure I still do, but but <laughs> he, he was just he was another like businessman back then in anything that uh, I'd seen. Yeah, I mean. It, it, we knew he was a big box thing, but Edison got all Edison got all the glory. Tesla did all the science, and Westinghouse kind of came in second. And so, but it was just another businessman. I think they actually came out. I think they like bought out a bunch of other bulb manufacturers or something like that, and just started just becoming a big conglomerate. Yeah, because yeah. well, there was one point where where um, um, Edison was was like put a stop or sued or something because of the the, the light bulbs how you screw them in. Mm -hmm. That was that was a Edison who owned that patent, so he was trying to make get Westinghouse to stop making light bulbs with doing that. So Westinghouse came up with his own way to plug in a light bulb instead. You know, so it's more like the the, the plug and twist, I think, the type. That yeah, we have in there, that little twist. It's yeah. like it's like Westinghouse got all the contracts for like the municipal lighting, and then Edison came up yeah. with the one that became popular for you know everyone's household. And then Tesla just, you know, lost. <laughs> yeah, he, he Tesla played a very, very small part in this movie, though. Um, he did go from, yeah. he did start off with Edison, and then he went over to Westinghouse and, and worked hmm. with him for a while as well. According to this film, uh, the whole AC versus DC debate, Tesla didn't play a very big role in. No, he didn't. I don't know he how just the end. He just, he just, is, but... Westinghouse yeah. already had uh, AC electricity and was setting up systems because it could go further with less uh, uh, less equipment. It was way cheaper. Yeah. Um, so, and that was before right. Tesla even uh, in, in this film, before Tesla even yeah. made an made an appearance uh, on on the scene. Now yeah, he they played. Had, they they had like a. Role. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I so said they had like a map of the United States with different city names, and they had these light bulbs with different colors on them, red for Westinghouse and white for Edison. And they went, you know, like Edison won this city, so they put a white light bulb in there. Westinghouse won this city, so they put a red light bulb in there. You know, so all these different cities had different – They one had DC, one had AC. The, the, no one was the same except, you know, that's how they were doing it. You know, it's like it's almost like playing a game of risk, taking over cities, you know, <laughs> with, the different, with the different types of current, you know. And yeah, that was it. Was it was funny? I mean, it was it was an inter it was an interesting watch. I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm sorry, you were saying something else, Dax. Oh, I was just uh, going to say that the if this if this film is is accurate, uh, what Tesla did really came after the film was over. But uh, he was able to develop, you know, most that ran on L, uh, alternating current uh, generators that were powerful and more efficient. Yep. He did a lot of uh, applications using AC electricity um, that everybody was struggling to get by the end of the movie. But up until then, it was just a, about 
bringing light. And uh, uh, and Edison had the bulb, apparently. And then it was just a matter of getting electricity to that light. Um, they, they, they really limited themselves to a very short scope of history so they could spend more time uh, exploring the characters, uh, the character of Edison and the char character of Westinghouse more than anything. Um, mm -hmm. and, and in this sort of weird, dreamy uh, <laughs> texture that the movie had, that that was really fascinating, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. What? Huh? What? When it came to like the electric, the, the electrician, the electrocution of the animals, it was basically Edison trying to show that AC is dangerous. It'll kill people. You know, he was trying to just discount Westinghouse. You know, giving a bad rep. So you know, and he went around. They didn't actually show anything. They kind of they showed one horse that they were going to euthanize anyway, but they didn't actually show that it happened. They just it, they went off. It went. It happened off screen, but they just show him pulling the switch. You know, um, and then they then they just had like newspaper clippings. You know, flash by with you know elephant and this and that. You know, all these different animals that were being electrocuted. Yeah, I saw the um, elephant one in uh, in history class. Right, mm -hmm. but in the, that led to the that Edison was very um, um, very sensitive about that that whole thing. He didn't like mm -hmm. killing animals. He didn't want electricity to be used for uh, uh, weapons of war, or he didn't want to develop weapons in the at, at all. So the fact that he developed the electric chair, which is which plays a major he, part. He did of that secretly. Movie. Yeah, he did that. He did that. He didn't want anybody to know he helped with that. You know, because you know he told um, him, "Okay, I'll give you the I'll give you the specs. Destroy the specs after you do it." But the guy secretly kept the specs. Uh, and he, yeah, I mean the the movie showed him feeling uh, very torn that, that that this thing is being built. But also, it's being built with the other guy's current, so yeah. they're going to do it one way or the other. I guess uh, I might as well make make the best use of it. I guess. Right. And it went, it went the first electric the first electrocution of a man went horribly, horribly wrong. Yep. Uh, and you know, and and he I mean, he even told him like I don't you know it could be. I think he told him if you get the if you get the voltage wrong, it's not going to work. You know, it, too much, too little. And he he was telling him don't do it. But they did it, you know, the guy went and did it anyway, and they, they messed it all up, you know, and it was bad. It was really bad. They didn't show that on screen either. They just, you know, he just got a report that it was, that it would happen, you know. Um, but yeah, and, and I have, the first person to die by electrician is William Kemmler. And in Newspapers labeled the event as far worse than hanging because they were looking for an alternative to hanging because they were thinking hanging was very inhumane. <laughs> you know? And they thought electricity would be humane. It would be quick and easy. And then it, it didn't work out that way for them the first time. Um, That's an interesting name. I wonder if there is a correlation to that, to the Harry Dr character that's named Kemmler. He turns out to oh. be like this badass necromancer <laughs> later. I forgot all about that. There's, there, should, there might be a connection there. It's like they had to kill him after, like they tried to go after him in World War One, where he was like reanimating entire uh, like cemeteries and then World mm -hmm. War Two, he was doing the whole thing too. So I'm like, it'd be interesting if that was how his character came to be was actually the guy who was the first, you know, first one electrocuted. 
Huh, never thought about that connection. <laughs> That's cool. But yeah. So that was the that was the current war. I agree, I like it. If you get to, if you get a chance to watch it, I think it's on Apple TV as well as you can you can pay for it to watch it on Amazon as well as a few other places I think. I think. Groovy. I do uh, look forward to it. I, I give it, it a, I give it a thumbs up. <laughs> How about you, Thax? Oh, I guess the question we should ask, like, was it, does it fall into steampunk? I mean, or is it just a movie in the right I era? Think, uh, I think that's good enough. Any any movie enough. with Edison and Tesla in it, um, for me, that, 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 it's, it's, that, arouses my steampunk interest. So, <laughs> That's exactly right. Okay. I don't know that it was necessarily um, steampunk. It was more of a historical drama, but it's good enough for me. It was really well done. <laughs> I. I Definitely think it's worth watching. I agree. I totally agree. Huh. So Jack, I'm, you know I'm your gonna hit it up. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna do my homework on that one. However, I did I did watch an episode or two of the other one. And uh oh, okay. I was pleasantly <laughs> surprised. I, I do like their take on it all. Yeah, let's all right, move we're on. Talking about the other yes. one. The other, yeah, the, the other show. I'm not going to accidentally release it, you know, unless y'all don't want to talk about it right now. So that's fine. We're, we're, I, I was I was working into oh. it. We're going to segue way into it now. We watched a TV show that was released last year, I, I believe, in the BBC. It was called War of the Worlds. Now everyone's heard of the War of the Worlds. It's it's more like right? War of the Worlds versus Great Britain. Britain, because that's really, really what they're hitting so far. It's like we're the British Empire. We can take on everything. We do war better than anybody. Oh, oh crap! Here come the Martians. Uh, okay, let me let me stop here and say that was. I don't think this is a BBC production. There is okay. another War of the Worlds that came out about about the same time by the BBC, right. but it's modern. modern. Modern times. Yes, I, I had those two kind of confused thing. when I was looking for them. <laughs> Oops. Uh, but yeah. But okay, I don't know. I, okay, so let's we'll figure out who released it later. Um, but right now it was War of the Worlds in well, they said Edwardian times, but it was yeah. Victorian Edwardian crossover time, like 1900, 1901. Yeah. We had cannons century. and muskets, and it was the height of the British Empire, and so you know, it was a good good time period for you know. You're going to invade an you know, entire planet. Yep, and what I liked, I mean, the thing is, that it was you know, if you ever seen any War of the Worlds show and the movie from the Tom Cruise one or the original one or you know any War of the Worlds, it was same. It was War of the Worlds beat for cough, beat. Cough. Independence Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, but but it was still War of the Worlds was first before that before Independence Day. <laughs> but it was it was War of the Worlds beat for beat all even up to the point where they're looking through the mic through the through the, through the telescope and they see the yeah. the, the, the puffs you know coming off of Mars you know they see the explosions off of Mars you know, you know that's in the, that's in, in the ones I've seen in the past you know and you know they they land they they people. They investigate things. All hell breaks loose. You know, it was beat to beat War of the Worlds, but in old time Britain, which, which so is far, not a I'm bad loving, thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm loving yeah. the fact that you have Rumpelstiltskin from Once Upon a Time, 
in That's there. That's where I knew him from. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I recognize he's, he's that guy. Everyone likes him. Yeah, so he was also, I remember from Stargate Universe. That's where I remember him from. But he was from Stolskin, yeah. I remember him from the full Monty. From where? The full Monty. Oh, yes. yes. Damn. <laughs> So if you want to see Rumble Silkin take his clothes off, <laughs> the um, <whole> thing. <laughs> okay, we're Same getting off topic. <laughs> <laughs> the whole world is British. The yeah. world. Um, um, it was originally written by H.G. Wells uh, mm -hmm. in 1897. So that's very very appropriate to be uh, performed at the turn of century this is. Uh, um, so I think thought that was very interesting. Yeah, they they kept very close to the original uh, serialized story uh, as opposed to the late ra the later radio show. Uh, um, mm. But uh, yeah, this this uh, this story has been made over and over in many time periods. But this one feels more appropriate, prettier. Yeah, it did look it's, prettier. It's of that of that period. Wait, did you um, say grittier or prettier? <laughs> Grittier, grittier. Okay. Of, I, I said prettier because I'll admit That's I didn't have a lot of connections to the like they didn't have all the major buildings that you associate with modern day London. It's, when you're looking at it, you don't you're kind of this weird disconnect about it because it's just a whole bunch of old buildings and you're running around, but you still get that weird, weird kind of like running around through the rubble feel. And, and like the dust clouds and the fact that people are just ex evaporating in puffs of like you know, fiery moats. And, you know, you're sitting there going, huh, we had like 20 minutes. It's a buildup for, for being in the 1800s. And then all of a sudden magic is happening. And, um, you know, it, it was very disconcerting, even for someone who was expecting aliens. And so I really did like that moment. Yeah. I yeah, mean, it really establishes that these aliens are high tech and these people have nothing. Yeah. Nothing yeah, to throw up cool. against it. And it's just like they're yeah, just. They, like, they, I think it was like microwaves they were shooting or something. You know, they, yeah, they had was, microwave. It wasn't a laser beam. It was yeah. some kind of microwave that would puff into flames. <laughs> and then they had the, the black smoke that they were basically just, you know, you know ortho weed begonning humanity throughout, you know, different parts of major, you know, major city, city centers. And uh, as, as far as I got right now, like they're starting to talk like they're in the they're in the future talking about the past now. Yeah. And so I got a little confused of... at first with that with when they're walking through the red ground, the red yeah, you know, the red planet. Like, it's like, yeah, what, what is this on Mars? Where are we? Where are we? Yeah. That was that Where's was John Carter confusing. Uh, yeah, and as they go further than than you've watched, Jack, they jump back and forth a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but they use the red background as the. Obviously, this is the future. This is the past. Mm -hmm. It reminds me a lot of like the Tiberian Sun Command and Conquer games, where they would have kind of you know first the alien substance that's now terraforming the planet is the thing you're having to do the resourcing with. But as you go 
go through the games, the game the game covers and the boxes get greener and glowing greener and greener as it becomes more and more a thing. So I, I do like the the color contrast they're using with the reds. Agree. Yeah, I get that. So apparently you watched two episodes. There's only been there's only three episodes total. Yeah, it's it's a really short sh show. So you're not, not that far. You're not that far right. behind. <laughs> I kind of want to wait really now and get you. Lex caught up and like have her watch the last one with me now because I'm just like I can't I can't just sit here and not watch this. Not her. <laughs> She's right over here <laughs> listening to me talk about about it. <laughs> I thought it was interesting seeing what what was added to the script on top of what I assume is all of H.G. Wells' work. Uh, from the very beginning of the movie, the uh, uh, the couple that are the main characters are self-described as pariahs in the society. And mm -hmm. for a while, you don't know why. It's very, it's very weird. And uh, eventually, I, I'm not. I guess I'm going to spoil it. They are. They uh, spoilers. The 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 gentleman is married to someone else, and they have separated. And he is, um, with another. Other woman, yeah, and that, that other woman is the other main character, and so they really and kind so, of in. yeah, yeah. Everyone, well, I think it was like I think it was specified he was married to a cousin <laughs> that he was kind of forced into marriage to. But apparently, in Britain, that was okay at that time. <laughs> that yeah, he was there was a lord involved. His brother was a lord. Therefore, for like favor and land and and whatnot and politically, they were in, they were involved that way. For, and obviously, they never really felt anything for each other except the the wife didn't want to lose her position or her um, money. So they actually had that moment where it was like, if you're going to divorce me, you're going to divorce me poor, and uh, right. go do your thing. So he did ask for a divorce, and she, she didn't want to give it to him. Yeah, no. So, because then she wouldn't be related to his brother anymore, and therefore she would lose her standing. So, I'm like, mm -hmm. why did we add? Like, I'm waiting to see why we added this because it was an interesting little twist to the story, like you were saying, Thax. Just kind of, huh? Like, what does this bring other than there's now a love triangle and an Forty and you know, a alien movie creates more depth to character and also helps fill three hours. True, <laughs> and it kind of explains that he fell in love with this lady who's very intelligent, but that's not really wanted in society because because they have to keep hiding her. Like, no, she's my assistant. She that's why she knows all this stuff. She listens to me all the time. Or you know, just kind of. You can go. You can go to college, but you're gonna have to have letters of writ to do it. And, and it sort of helps to remind all of us as viewers what Victorian slash Edwardian British society was a was like. Yeah, because we really mm -hmm. don't have a lot of. Uh, a, a lot of of experience directly with it so it's 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 really setting the the rules of society of the time uh just to give you a, a clear understanding of where where you're at coming into this movie yes. um also later when he gets volunteered into the military <laughs> yeah, we're looking yeah, for volunteers. Just... You're gonna be one. 
<laughs> yeah. It's oh. like, I see a volunteer sure. here. Have a gun. If you don't shoot the guy over the enemy over there, this guy here is going to shoot you. His name's Bob. He's your commanding <laughs> officer. And it's, a, it, and, it's, and it's the whole and the whole thing about you know the, you know this guy the, the officer or whatever wouldn't listen to him because he already experienced what one of these things can do. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, look, I saw it happen. This is what you know. All hell broke loose. People died, and the guy would not listen to him. It's just like, nope. I'm, I'm the officer here. You don't, you don't know nothing. You know, it's like the whole hubris of people in charge. You know, it's just crazy to me. I mean, we see that all the time still. Just yep, yep. <laughs> we can take it. We have cannons. What can cannons not do? Right, right. It doesn't. Right. It doesn't matter what you saw. You, know, yep. you must have been. You're, you're delusional. <laughs> you didn't see that. You know, we can take it. I mean, they did shoot it, and it did blow up the, the, the one of the things, but yeah. you know, it didn't pop anything. <laughs> it's kind of sped it the process. Didn't stop the... Mm-hmm. Oh, it was. I mean, I know how the, I know how the movie's going to end, but yep. it's right. going to end with a different position of Earth. It's going to end with humanity in a different position. Here's my all right. So y'all have probably watched it, but here's my guess. We all know it's the you know it's it's bacteria and viruses that save the day again. But yeah, they don't use that as a surprise ending this time because no, they know everyone. No. Sees it. They know yeah, they're kind of guessing at it. It's like there's something else killing them. It wasn't obviously the what you know the third dragoons you know and Randy's range or <laughs> whatever, like you know doing all that. It. It, it sounds fantastical and romantic that they stop the you know they stop the invasion, but they they kind of have this guess. It's like there's something else here doing it because it's just right. It just stopped. That the machines just stopped moving. Like, did they run out of power? They did. They did put a little bit of a twist on what was killing them, in my opinion. One that I've never seen before. And I'm, I'm gonna spoil seen it. That yet. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if Jack. The, I'm gonna spoil the third, it. The third hour, Jack, is where the 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 monsters come out of the machines. Yeah, they were just talking about that. It's like this is when they came out, and then it like, oh. cuts, like next week or whatever, next episode. I'm like, ah, I can't wait. It it becomes a full on monster movie then, with the uh, <laughs> yeah, robbery <laughs> monsters in the dark. It's great. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't. Maybe I won't spoil it. Should I? That's a tough one. But yes, uh, it is this typical ending of World of Worlds, where something you know, they we didn't we didn't defeat them. They just they they died. <laughs> but and now we have all this technology. Course, being, being the being the British and their manifest destiny, and everything. Yes, they 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 defeated the they defeated oh, them. And, you, know, they, they, you know, you know that that's their story, and that's they're sticking to it. Oh you know, yeah. It's good, it's good PR. Mm-hmm. But I really liked. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spoil some of the end for. I don't think anybody. Jack understands where it's where this is going. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, in H.G. Wells' version, it's sort of like by the end, it was like, and then everything's okay, yay. Yeah. But that exactly. is not how this ends. No, it's it 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 like it's like halfway much terraformed. Easier. It's much more post-apocalyptic by the end mm-hmm. they really spend more time establishing that the world is a shit show by it, it was terraformed for essentially yeah it was all it turned it turned red the water's polluted it's just it's not good you know and <laughs> um, uh, now i would love to see a like a sequel to this new future really because that sounds fantastic you get like new <laughs> governments and you know the second maybe, world, <laughs> world where we go to mars now to go kick you know do them the american thing <laughs> <laughs> right the, oh you, you come after us or we're going after you yeah <laughs> there's oil on mars <laughs> obviously there's, hey, there's there's life there must be oil let's go yeah i mean what, what, what the only thing that kind of bugged me about the the aliens what they said like the aliens were looking at earth with envy yeah you know, it's like, so apparently that you know apparently they used up mars and it was dead or whatever so they wanted to come here but then they did the same thing to earth that they did to mars like instantaneously they turned it red and they you know they well, that's or, because I don't know. Of... that entry was a direct a direct quote straight from the beginning of the story that's mm-hmm. hg wells's writing there okay. right so you know I, don't, <laughs> the planet's don't take bigger we've got more resources we got more you know, we have tectonics we got seasons <laughs> i mean there's, there's a lot with, of reasons there, now Seasons look like it was just red and thunderstorm. Like a wobbly planet. It turned it into one season. <laughs> wobbly. <laughs> there's, a, there's a funny like, alien cartoon. I'll see if I can put it up here and, and post somewhere. But it's it's literally these aliens coming back to like some guy on Earth who like like 
on a website sold Earth to an alien, and they're like, "We want our money back. You sold us a wobbly planet." <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> oh man, I'm, I'm, there was there was a, there's a series of novels written by a gentleman named Harry Turtle Dove. Or Turtle Dove. It's called um, basically the the premise is in the middle of World War One, we get invaded by aliens. And they're like lizard aliens, lizard, lizard type people, aliens from the moon. And but we catch them off guard because they originally they set off a bunch of um, EM, EMPs thinking mm -hmm. that it'll cripple us. But back then, EMPs didn't really hurt our electronics so much. So we catch them off guard. Ooh, and all of our telegraph machines are broken. Okay. Yeah. And, and you know they were they were expecting us to be on horseback and wearing armor, you know, and swords, you know. So the fact that we had guns and all that kind of stuff really threw them off guard. So we didn't defeat him, defeat him, but we put it fought him to a standstill. And then throughout the series, blah blah, more stuff happens. And in the second series, we went to their planet, and say, oh, "Hey, because we because we told, we stole their technology like we do." <laughs> it's like, and it's like, well, you know, we now we know how to do it. Now now we know how to travel. You know, so we went to their planet and said, "Hey, guess what?" You know, but anyway, it was a good, it was a really good. Very good planet flag on your mountain. <laughs> yeah. I did but a quick anyway. Google that, search. That... And Harry Turtle Dove has written a lot of books. <laughs> yes, mostly alternate history. A lot of alternate so, history books. The I World War series is what I was talking about. The one you're describing. World War? The World, World War series, I believe World it's called? War? Okay. So yeah, my brother actually books. told me about those. I think I got like four. Well, it's, like, right it's like seven books, eight books. It's a lot. Because <laughs> it progresses like, through the time. It starts off in World War One and it goes forward in time. You know? Well, so we there's World, World War II. and then Great War. Maybe that... Well, the Great War the Great War's earlier... I think the Great War is more like uh, it's not the same series. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. It's <laughs> I, I've seen World War as being a it's like something. Anything series. that says like in, in, into the balance or something to balance anything with the word balance in it might is probably the World War is a World War series. But that was that, oh. it's, a, it's not it's not steampunk. Not really, uh, <laughs> unless unless World War One. That's diesel punk. It's diesel <laughs> punk counts with 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 alien invasion and in, in thrown in there. You know. I mean, you know. The, the multiverse is big. A lot of things happen. We have Star Wars steampunk, and the only person who can really appreciate that's me because I'm actually from this timeline, you know, the actual like Terra timeline thing. So like, How the hell does get I don't, out of here? I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Ter timelines? What? I, I don't, you know what? Just I, Jack's crazy. He's going to go have another cup of tea. <laughs> List to be. I mean, I just, I just go on jaunts, you know, you know, looking for the best beer, you know. It's like I don't know what timeline you're talking about. Inter interdimensional space steam beer. For the, <laughs> I'll have to come up with an interesting name I mean, for like a pop top. I, re I remember sitting in on a group, group of people who were talking to some emperor, red hand emperor. Or like that but he kept changing personalities i don't oh, that know was so fantastic <laughs> that was that was in san antonio i i was confused i don't know who these people were <laughs> I, I, well I, I do because i'm wanted for like grand larceny and a couple other things that you know the red fork empire <laughs> steal oh, many great. things including one of the emperor's big hands. Okay. Is there a know. reward for you? Talking about. <laughs> a you were there, Zach. <laughs> well, I've never watched this War of the Worlds movie, and you guys are talking about big hands. Yes, talk. we drifted. So Sorry, we drifted. My bad. My bad. I drifted by bringing up. <laughs> uh, uh, but anyway, so I think it was a good show. I liked it. It was a really good adaptation of the World of Worlds. Um, does it count as steampunk? There was aliens involved. <laughs> there was a little bit of science. <laughs> I like it from the perspective that it doesn't have to be overly technologically steampunk to be steampunk. The fact that right. it is technically steampunk because it is now an alternate history. There is new technology technology now there's a new way things are going to have to go new technology will have to come out of this I and agree. it is in the height of the steam age so technology is yes. going to fall backwards 
I actually would love to see a futuristic written on this one because I would like to see how they're going to deal with the plague that's now all over the planet. So, yep. you gotta got to believe that something. Yeah, yeah. Watch hour, Jack. No. yeah I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for it. I'm just like, how are you going to tie this movie to like infernal machines that, you know, <laughs> driving cities? that just run around eat oh, other cities. Yeah. <laughs> I don't they don't get that far into it, but I, I know. I I know. <laughs> but it would be entertaining to see that actually be like, you know, how, how do you tie all these movies together now? Squeak. <laughs> now do you think that this was happening the same time as oh say the American version the, from the the radio play? What time what time period was radio play in? Oh no, radio that in the thirties or twenties? That was yeah. in the future? I think that was yeah, in the it's... 40s. 40s, okay. So it's not the same time period, okay. Because I mean, I like uh, to, I like to imagine that it was just, a, it was, a, it was, you know, same happening at the same time, just different parts of the world, you know. But it was, but it was the exact same, same beat to beat, you know, hiding under the table. Blah, blah, blah. October thirtieth. Mm. So. Okay, never mind. I mean, well, my no, but I would like to see, to see what happens. It's like, if this is happening all over our planet, let's get this. Let's get the Russians, you know, perspective because we <laughs> talked about the you know, war with the czars. Maybe we'll get a better, better version of Cowboys versus Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was cute. I liked that movie, but there's a lot more that could have gone on for that to be steampunk. The only thing steampunk yes, was the, the wristband. Exactly. <laughs> Hence, I meant a better version. <laughs> I thought this was really well done. Uh, I don't know mm -hmm. if it was what, what kind of budget they were working with, but it felt like a, 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 a high budget film. They, they used their funds well. Uh, the special effects didn't seem cheesy. Um, the cinematography was really great. And I liked how they pulled in other details from the era that didn't necessarily change the plot, um, but really filled in gaps that H.G. Wells may not have had. Uh, so so I, I definitely recommend this. I have no idea how to find it. Yeah, I was... Uh... I think it's on YouTube, according to what I see here. Um, may, might be on YouTube, where well, the trailers are anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, trailers. Yeah, I was a little, uh, I'm not going to say exactly how I managed to get a copy of it, because, you know, I don't want to, I don't want it on the record. A little nudge, nudge, and a wink, wink. Yeah. Let's just say, you know, we found it. It fell off the back of yeah. the truck. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't being it's, used. You know? It's one of those things. If it's hard to find and it's not easy to rent, then I understand. But if it's like, See, what, oh, what, yeah, what, it's what, go, you know, $10 or whatever and you can get it, or I can go and, you know, do what I do as Jack to get it, there's, there's a difference. I, Exactly. I think I did the same thing as what Jack does. What originally got me on the on the trail of this is, uh, like I said, on my I was looking through my DVR or looking on the at my on my TV, looking at you know things to re what to what to watch, and I saw that it was what the world's going to be going to be shown on on Sunday night on the H and I network, and it's and I read the description. It said it awarded you know, War of the Worlds during the Awardian era. It's like, oh, well, that sounds interesting. What is that? So I looked it up, and I set it to record. And then I looked it up, and it's like, well, I'm, I'm, there's only three episodes. I'll find it in another way. Luckily, I did, because what was actually recorded was not this one, even oh. though the, the description described – it's the same description as this one is. It was – a 1980s War of the World show that happened back then that was 
terrible. Speaking of having a budget or non non existent I mean, budget, it, it was definitely it was definitely a nineteen eighties show. It was a nineteen eighties show, and I remember I vaguely remember it back then. But it was only loosely, loosely based on the world of the world of H.G. Wells. <laughs> you know, we were being invaded by aliens, yes, but yeah, they were, they were all weird, creepy little. It was bad budget and bad special effects and all that kind of stuff. I don't know why it said the Edwardian time. Somebody's either screwed up with the description or they screwed up and put the wrong tape in the machine. <laughs> you know, either way, somebody <laughs> screwed up somewhere, you know. <laughs> I was like, oh God, Bob. <laughs> you know, but I'm, so, I'm glad I managed to. Yeah. I want to take this moment to uh, sort of tie these, these, two, these two pieces of, of history together. Yes, not that do. War of the Worlds was history. But it was written by H.G. Wells <laughs> in 1889, as we've mentioned, mm -hmm. which is. Within the time frame that Nikola Tesla was developing his AC equipment, and and uh, what what I'm He's thinking about right now is his uh, his patents for uh, radio transmission, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the first uh, radio trans uh, receiver that he made. Mm -hmm. that he turned on and started listening to and he thought he was receiving signals it, and since exactly. no one else on the planet had a radio they must be coming from somewhere else and that's why some argue that he thought these were coming from Mars I Martians mean, were ticket item they, right then you know they're, they're, they were finding quote canals on mars clearly there was a there was a a, a civilization up there well they must already have radios and he can hear them <laughs> which i think makes is perfect sense to me <laughs> fascinating oh god oh. we have aliens we figured it out yeah, no. Like maybe they, maybe, it was, maybe it was his signal that that got their, their attention. That's why they came and invaded. <laughs> I did like how this one started off though with the guy with the telescope taking pictures mm -hmm. of Mars to show you that technology existed. Because yes. a lot of people don't realize that telescopes haven't really changed that type of telescope has not really changed any since that yeah, time you had to put an old you had to put that old tiny camera in front of the telescope I mean, you know, get, sort of... custom lens piece and everything now you can like stick your cell phone up you know you can cram your yeah. cell phone up and <laughs> take a picture but uh you know even even it was just kind of funny. A lot of people were like, well, telescopes have gotten better. Like radio telescopes have gotten better. Mm -hmm. Optical telescopes. I... Same, same. Maybe bigger. <laughs> it only gets so good because the yeah. uh, distortion of the atmosphere. Yeah. But you bring a great point up, Jack, that Mars is really close. Mm -hmm. Close enough to see through a turn of the century telescope. Such that you can see details. Not very well, but yeah. you know. But you can see you can what see like the pictures they took. There. Yeah. And yeah, I want those pictures. So those are cool pictures. <laughs> And it was just kind of one of those things of every, everyone kind of realizing, oh, well, maybe we can shoot ourselves and through like a cannon to the next planet over or something. 
thing at this point. <laughs> and, you know, they will miss and hit the spoon full of cheese and never go back when we found out it's not made of cheese. Up until, you know, recent. <laughs> but, you know, however that works. But uh, I, I did like that attack because I think as technology wise people were like oh 1800s they didn't know anything like eh, Galileo had a telescope were... that was a little less better than that yeah. one yeah but and, and they were just starting to learn they were just starting to really decide hey science is a thing <laughs> you know I mean we're taking it seriously anyway yeah I remember when they drove when the military showed up at the first crash site, the first episode, they have like, I'm an astro, an astronomer or whatever, like the master guy of my, of my thing. Yeah. You're, aren't you a chemist? And like, they get like this kind of like, be guy at each other. <laughs> yep. Like, yeah. What are you doing here? Yeah, they definitely. Yeah, she. They. They. they she, the, the lady. I forget her name, but yeah, he was. He was dismissive of her, but luckily her friend stood up for her and said, "Hey, she's she's my assistant. Leave her, leave her alone." Kind of thing. So, so he was progressive for his time. Yeah, I guess you can say. Very much so. <laughs> and also, I think that H. Uh, uh, H. G. Wells was. Uh, gotta get that right. Uh, there was no such thing as science fiction. There was just uh, there was a uh, uh, what what was the what was the word they wanted to use um, speculative fiction. The idea that this could be true, and if it were, something might go kind of like this. And if you take it from that lens. This is a scary story, man. Yes. It's <laughs> almost <laughs> like this is what's going to happen. We can dismiss it as, oh, that's a fun story, and that was kind of woo woo. But mm -hmm. if you consider this seriously speculative, that this might could happen, this, this could scare the pants off of you. Oh yeah, I mean, oh. it did. And but it that's why right. on the radio, oh, people were like, "Yeah, oh, the radio man." People thought that. it was real. Because <laughs> I mean, I, I know it was broadcast on the radio as fiction, and you know, but people didn't realize it was fiction because they didn't hear the beginning of it or something. And they thought, "Oh shit, this yeah. is really happening." Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and yeah. Radio uh, was was still new, um, and it's the, the only thing that people were able to get their their news from. Uh, mm -hmm. The World War Two just ended, and and people were still afraid of uh, of. Uh, the, the Nazis or the Russians or whoever. Um, and so the it's idea that the this, is a, this is a radio drama, I mean, radio dramas were not uncommon, but that this radio drama was pretending to be a real news broadcast Right. Where, yes, I think it's like this is where you the, get your news. Scary, scary yeah, stuff. It likely didn't have like the usual drama stuff for like when you had a story being told, like um, music playing, and like yeah. it was all done. The and shadow music. knows. Yeah. So it was like, yeah. oh. Crap. Crap. Well, but you know, for us, it'd be like if Walter Cronkite was doing the story, then we would be 
we'd be more worried. Like at first we think, oh, it's real. But no, they actually got a real newscaster to do the story. To play the part, yeah. yeah. Part, which would be, you know, I can't remember when it started becoming popular to do that in movies. I'm gonna, for me, me as a as a kid of like the late '80s, early '90s, when I saw, saw like real like people I saw like on the news and whatnot in movies, just kind of like, whoa, wait, what? But <laughs> so I, I could imagine that being a, think, a problem. Yeah, it's sort of the genius that Orson Welles. Uh, was to create this he actually got an actor at some point who sounded like um the president uh oh, sounded okay. like uh, um jfk no um roosevelt roosevelt yeah uh, roosevelt and he did they didn't say it was the president. They said it was some some assistant or or some secretary. But if you weren't paying enough attention, and you, you heard suddenly him. heard heard President Roosevelt on the radio talking about the aliens, <laughs> well, damn. It, yeah. Well, I mean, you know uh, the. The Pentagon did release some, some documents recently. Apparently, oh, the, the yep. pose yes, yeah, pictures. Yeah, yeah. Well, they actually I, said we don't know what this is. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure the thing was is those were leaked a while back, and I think they're just like, okay, everyone knows about these. Let's just like, just if we can say we don't know what they are, then it doesn't matter. Whether we know what it is right. or not, they they really release new information without giving you any new information. Yeah, because um, right. they know nothing. the The big thing is, it's no longer a leak. You can actually say these came from the Pentagon, which uh, which gives us some credence that it didn't have before, but still doesn't mm -hmm. tell you anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's inter interesting to watch War of the Worlds in this context now, if you're following mm -hmm. that sort of that sort of news. Uh, I mean, what else can happen in this in this year in this in this year and age right now? I mean, we've already gone through so much. <laughs> My wife's over here. Shut your mouth. Right? Don't 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 tempt the fates. Don't tempt the fates. Tempting. Man. I'm tempting the fates. <laughs> Bring it on. Maybe kind of no, I mean, I, don't. I mean, yeah, like I said, me personally, the last couple of weeks have been a kick in the ass or harder. Uh, I'm not going to yeah. talk about it, but <laughs> but I'm still smiling. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> um, well, I, w wow, we, we've come up in an hour now, so I think we should wrap yep. things up. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's still short for me because I was I was 20 minutes late, so you know. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, so for. Unfortunately, we didn't have any live listeners today, but you know, That's for fine. people who are pick up the uh, pick up the audio feed, thank you for listening. If you want to have a please comment on Facebook or on any the podcast feeds and you find this on, comment, leave a you know, leave, leave, leave a rating. You know, the more ratings, the more we're found. People can find us. I would um, love comments. I would love to have conversations yes. with anybody who listens and wants to add something in. Um, I, I try hard to respond to. Anyone that, you know, that is appropriate to respond talk to. to us. Yeah. <laughs> yes, if you find something steampunk that we haven't talked about or you want us to talk about, tell us what it is and we'll we'll take a look at it. And we'll, you know, maybe we'll talk about it. You know, so, because we're always looking for more steampunk. Especially always in these times where we can't get out. Yes. Like, how much steampunk can I do in my house? Huh. <laughs> I'm finding new new ways of of, uh, of doing that. Actually, uh, Lex and I, you know, kind of just throw it on here. We may talk about it next time a little bit. We're looking at writing a book. We're we're stuck cool. in here. We know all these people. We may be adding, you know, throwing people's names in. We know so <laughs> names yeah. names should be changed to protect the innocent. So. <laughs> <Are we laughs> in innocent? You think you guys are innocent? 
<laughs> okay, oh. name should be changed to protect the guilty. <laughs> no, ooh, there, see? There we go. That's how you do a podcast. It's like, it's like I, I, yeah, I, I plead the uh, the amendment, whatever amendment that is. <laughs> the, 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 the interdimensional amendment that you know, for uh, extra galactical rights. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to incriminate myself. You know, so. <laughs> or or anybody else. Or anybody. so anyway. Once again, thank you for listening. Um, until next time, mind your gauges. Mind your gauges. And know your onions. Know, know your onions. Okay, that's a new one. All right. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. All are clear again. Let us sing a song of cheer again. Happy days are here again. All together, shout it now. There's no one who.